Hi, this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Today we're going to be repairing the pre-amplifier on this Rhodes Suitcase electric piano. Repairing electric pianos isn't really my thing, but when I saw this Rhodes Mark I suitcase come up for sale locally at a good price, I jumped on it. It's in nice cosmetic condition, but it didn't have the speaker cabinet. The speaker cabinet includes a power supply, which powers this Janus preamp. The preamp provides vibrato and equalization controls, in addition to boosting the output to the levels an amp would expect. So while the speaker cabinet is really cumbersome and we can do without the speaker and power amplifier part of it, it really would be nice to have this preamp working. So what I did was I made my own preamp power supply. It powers the preamp and it interfaces the piano to the two quarter inch jacks you'd normally find on the output of the speaker cabinet. I used the new 3D printer I got a couple videos back and I printed a nice enclosure for it complete with a fancy embossed synth chaser logo. It does the job great and it weighs a lot less than the original speaker cabinet. So here's the piano without the preamp just going straight into my amplifier. And here it is with the uh, powered preamp from my power box. The problem we're going to be repairing today is this. When I first turned the vibrato on, the vibrato LED light came on, turned off, and then never came back on. And as you can hear, the vibrato just doesn't work. And if I switch to my other output channel, the vibrato, as I increase the intensity, actually mutes the signal but it only does that on one of the two channels. And while we're working on it, we can clean up these scratchy pots and sliders. This should be a pretty easy repair, but I figured since this was something a little different than what I usually have on my channel, I'd share it with you guys. To get the preamp out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop the top off, disconnect one wire connecting the preamp to the harp, and then unscrew and remove this whole front panel, which is called the name board. But while we have this open, let's have a look at the harp up on top and the keyboard down below. Uh, these are always so cool to see the inside of. It's a real piano with real wooden keys and hammers that come and hit these uh, metallic spindles, which are connected to these metallic tines, which vibrate and are picked up by these little pickup coils, one for each key. And the signal gets... summed up and comes out here along this one wire and it comes down here and goes into the pickup and when I plug my quarter inch jack here I was just taking that that unamplified passive signal that was being picked up by the pickups and sending it to my amp when I powered the preamp then essentially it was becoming an electronic instrument but this is this is just super super cool And here's the preamp, removed and opened up. There's not a lot of stuff going on in this preamp. There's three dual-op amps. One's used to amplify the signal from the keyboard and apply the equalization. Another's used to create and shape the LFO for the vibrato. And another's used to apply the vibrato to the two output channels. There's one transistor, which is just to drive the vibrato LED. And there's two uh, Vactrols, or opto-isolators, uh, one for each channel that's being output. And then there's the vibrato switch itself and the pots and sliders. We could power this up and troubleshoot it with the oscilloscope, but instead we're going to take an educated guess as to what our problems are. Since we have no vibrato, a good educated guess is that one or both of the op amps here on IC2 is bad. And since we have different behavior on channel 1 and channel 2 when we turn the vibrato intensity up, a good educated guess is either that one of the two op amps on IC3 is dead, or one of the two Vactrols is dead. Uh, there's not much else that reasonably could be the problem. So let's yank these two op amps and test them out.
So in my little op amp tester, I see two here is working okay. You can see it's flashing those lights for both op amps. So both halves of this op amp are okay. And the same for IC3, uh, both halves of the op amp test okay. So educated guess was not correct. So with both of those op amps testing okay, I hooked it up to the oscilloscope and I tracked it down to this 10 microfarad capacitor that's in the LFO circuitry. It's a polarized capacitor. As you can see here, there's no capacitance. And if I test it on, uh, re for resistance on ohms, it's a dead short. So uh, this, this could be a tantalum. We'll replace this. And while we're at it, we'll go ahead and replace these four electrolytic capacitors. These other ones that look the same as the one that I just took out, they are non-polarized, so they should be okay. But uh, these these four here are electrolytic capacitors, they're 100 microfarad capacitors. From the schematic, they look like they're just decoupling capacitors for the power rails. Um, these aren't like power supply filter capacitors that get heavy abuse. So they're probably still fine, but they certainly don't improve with age, and they're not in the signal path, so they don't contribute to the sound in any way. So if we're looking to service this and improve its longevity and reliability for its future owner, there's no reason we wouldn't want to recap those. So here I've changed out the 400 microfarad capacitors, the power supply decoupling capacitors. I've changed out the, uh, the 10 microfarad capacitor, the, the bad one for the uh, vibrato LFO. And since I had taken two of the dual op-amp chips out already, I took the third one out, I installed sockets, and I put new chips in. Uh, the reason is the same reason that I replaced these capacitors. Even though they are okay right now, uh, they, they're not going to get any better with age. So while I'm doing this service, I might as well make things more reliable for its new owner. Uh, I come around to this side and turn vibrato on. Sorry, it's upside down, but uh, we'll, we can adjust the speed and the vibrato appears to be working. Uh, we'll, of course, test it out once we put it back in the piano. But before that, I'm going to give the pots and the sliders a good cleaning. And then I noticed for the vibrato LED, the, the wire is loose in its crimp terminal. So I'm going to repair that so it doesn't become a problem down the road. So it's all put back together and we can test the vibrato on each separate channel. So here's the first one. So there's more work that could be done on this piano. Each of the keys should be tuned and the action of the keyboard could be restored. As I'm sure you noticed, it's quite noisy. However, a lesson that I learned in my last video is I should stick within my area of expertise. So I'll have to leave that stuff for the new owner if they feel it's needed. This piano is available for sale on my website right now. This has been Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Thanks for watching and see you next time.